Hello, everybody. It's -a me, that guy over there. Oh, whoops. Uh, I just wanted to show off this little thing first of all because I thought it was cool. Not a single frame of animation on the leg segments. It's all just with math. See, pay attention in trigonometry class. You might be able to do this one day. I'm not even going to tell you how I did it. Because I don't have to. So today, what I thought I'd do for real is a little demo on how to make a multi-part multi, multi -part boss, which somebody wondered about quite a while ago. Kind of feel bad that I didn't get back to him sooner. And while I'm doing that, I might as well show off how to draw stuff. Whoa, check that out. Now that is a high-quality sprite. Wow. Oh my goodness. The height of my spriting career is this. Alright, that looks kind of weird. Whatever. Doesn't matter at this point. All I need is a... Whoops. All I need is a... There we go. Base for my boss. So that's what it is. Boss base. Good. Let's quickly make another object. We're not even going to add anything to this one. We're just going to change the hot spot and the action point. And we're going to make a bunch of them. We're going to call them boss segment. And then we're going to quickly make another one. This one's going to be mildly big. Nah, 64 by 64. And we're going to actually draw something here. Me. Claw thing. I really like claws. Can you tell? Oh, wait, you haven't played the way back yet. You wouldn't know. Ha ha. It's an inside joke. Man, I'm really kind of being a jerk today. It's okay. I can do that. I'm that guy over there. You don't even know who I am. Alright, so now we have the boss's head, which totally doesn't match its body. You know, that's okay. Coding. Alright, so let's go in here. Oh, whoops. I forgot a crucial part. Player Bullet Ah, uh, so we're gonna change the action point and the hot spot. We're gonna miss clicking that thing. We're gonna change the action point and the hot spot. We're gonna make it really tiny, stretch proportional, boom, we're gonna reset the hot spot and the action point, and there you go. There's the bullet. Alright, so, let's get right into this. We're going to make a group of events called Player. We're going to say, uh, when uh, you repeat, press this, and every so-and-so amount of seconds, this thing's going to launch the bullet upwards at 60. When the bullet's position is outside of the play area, we're going to destroy it. Also, we're going to change this thing's movement to 8 direction. I don't know if this really matters right now. 90-90, whatever. Check that it works. Da -da 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 -da. Shoot, 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 shoot. Good enough. So there's your player. Make it distinguishable from the segments. Sure. Oh wow, that's that's amazing right there. Okay, so now for the actual coding of the boss. So what we're gonna do here this could take a while actually, this might be multiple parts. In all seriousness, because this could take a little while. So, alright, let's start off by naming some values. So, behavior is going to be how it attacks. Segment number. And, yeah. Uh, let's just put HP, what the heck. 
this thing is going to be ID, value A, then we're going to be shoot timer. And because I'll need it, I need to make another object. Somehow I think this is like the most efficient I've ever been in making a game. Just blasting along here. Did I name this now? Boss Bullet. So we have six objects and we're going to make a game. So when this thing's behavior is equal to one, or zero, let's just say zero. And, okay, and the player's position is greater than this thing's position. This thing is going to move to the right. I set its x coordinate to its own x coordinate plus one. Do the same thing except for when the player whoops, except for when the player is lower than this thing's value, it's gonna move to the left. Let's see if that works. Testing, one, two, three. Oh, yep, it follows me. Die thing. How much time have I used? Way more time than I thought. So we have all of our objects, we have this, blah, blah, blah. Start a frame, here's how the actual segments come in. We're going to spread, value, that's not the right object, we're going to spread, zero, and the ID, actually let's spread one. What spreading values does is it takes the objects and it numbers them according to the order in which they've been created. Since this one was the first, it will be one, two, three, four, five, six. It spreads the value through all of them so that they all have a different value. It's good for making them have IDs as I just did. And we're also going to set this thing, set this segment number to number of these objects times 1.0, and that's important. Remember the 1.0. Always set, oh boy, I don't know if I remember this. X coordinate, this thing's, no. The base is X coordinate. Uh, minus, oh boy, I might have to make part two for this part, because I don't know if I remember. Let's try anyway, though. Minus this thing's X coordinate. Huh, no, it's going to be plus that thing. Uh, divided by this thing's ID. Uh, Alright, let's change the parentheses right there. Don't copy this yet. I might be screwing up. Let's see. Oh, wow, that doesn't work. Huh. Okay. Alright, so, uh, <laughs> short episode today. Not really. We have all these objects. We've managed to make this thing follow the player. We have all the segments. You know, I just can't deal with that. Alright, that's better. We have all the segments, and we have the bullets, and we can shoot at the boss. Next time, we will actually figure out how to make the segments go in between the boss and the head, or the base of the boss and the head. We will animate things better, and we'll have tons of fun. So I hope to see you then. Bye-bye.